what's going on, what's going on. So I want to talk to you about five things that the Bible says that is a good man. So it's, it's, it's actually going to be 10, but I'm going I'm to do a part one and two. So today is part one. Um, number one, he will, he will love you just the way you are. But God shows his love while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. 1 John 4, 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. So this man will love you. If, he, if, if you come to him broken, he will love you because he knows God's grace and mercy. What God's grace and mercy did for him on his life. He, he won't come to you judgmental. He won't come to you belittling you. You know, so his love should mimic God love. Number two, he would accept your kids as they were his own. In Matthew 1, verse 18 through 25, but I'm going to start at um, um, verse 26. But after he had considered this, Joseph, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And so this man will not see your kids separate from who you are. This man will see your kids as a part of who you are. And he understands if, if, he, if he does for you, he does for them. He has to take everything in consideration. If he wants to go out, he has to make sure that the, um, your kids are taken care of and not just left at home, just... You know, young kids just left at home just to be left at home, you know, just so they can, you guys can go out here, make sure that they're in a safe environment and, um, and enjoying themselves. He would treat them, hopefully how he's treating his own kids with love. Number three, he will be sensitive to your needs. Um, this verse right here, husbands in the same way, be understanding and considerate as you live with your wives be considerate or understanding and speak, speak of being, so the Bible speaks of being sensitive to your wife's deepest physical and emotional needs. In other words, be thoughtful and respectful. Remember, you are to nourish and cherish her, says Ephesians 5, verse 25 through 28. And so that's one thing us as men have to understand is that women are wired differently than us. Because God is just so good at how how he designed man and woman um, so different. You know, he didn't design us, um, you know, to be confused about who we are. No, there are specific things that a woman, um, her the way she views things and understanding the way she, the way her chemical makeup, God did on purpose. But us as men, we should be more understanding that our women you know, they're, they're very emotional. We can't talk to them harsh like we do our buddies and, you know, how we would probably do our sons, you know, just kind of roughing them up. And we have to be very gentle and loving to our wives. So we have to be very careful what we say to them. Number four, he will spend time for you. The Bible says for where your treasures is, there your heart would also be in Matthew 6, verse 21. So you shouldn't have to fight for, uh, quality time. If you ask him for quality time more than him, listen to me, sisters. He's just not into you. I'm going I'm to keep it real with you. Stop chasing a man that's not willing to chase you back. You know, it, it goes mutual. I don't, I don't, I feel like a woman shouldn't chase a man, but I feel like a woman should, should definitely make herself available to be chased enough to where the man feels like what he's working for is is honorable and good and that that he's he's just not given something you know because men we're designed we're designed from the beginning of genesis we're designed to work for whatever it is that's good whatever it is that we want we're designed to to work for it number five he will pray with you and pray for you and uh, this verse right here is is, is powerful Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And, that, and that's, that's the beauty of us praying for each other. Us, the Bible says two are better than one. 
that's that's the wonderful, wonderful feeling that you know that you have a a man in your life, even even a woman for us, that that prays for us in our time of need, and and that's what we need, and especially we need that today. They they want to redefine what a marriage is and what a relationship is. You know, a marriage is between a a, a man and a woman, and 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 God has designed it f- for His purposes and and us being you know when, when when god said in genesis that we need a helper because a man our our whole makeup we 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 shouldn't want another man because i mean we two lost souls for one you know so we we need the, we need the the wonderful wisdom and understanding god has given with women to kind of balance us out and I don't even understand why another woman will want another woman because of, because of the emotions and everything, the thought process. And, and we can go on about that. But, but God made man and woman for, un, for, commun, for communion and u, reunion and unity for each other. And so a good man will make sure he's representing God in, in the fullest, in the best way. So those are five five things a biblical good man would have i haven't done any videos lately so wonderful wonderful blessings have um have definitely been raining down on me so just be patient more videos to come a better a better 2021 summer um with videos and content um i write all the time i, I stay writing in this book so i have plenty of stuff that, that the holy spirit is a is giving me for topics and for relationships and strengthening them because we need strong, biblical, biblically grounded relationships today. Period. We need them. We can't. We can't allow the uh, a, a weak spot in our relationships for the enemy to exploit. So we have to be very, very strong, and we have to be careful who we invite in our lives. So it so they don't waste our time because we don't have any time to waste. We need to. We need to in this in in the in this Bible. We need to be in it together, strengthening our relationship and spreading the gospel, so we can save us, so we can spread as the good news to anybody that wants Jesus Christ to save them. You have a good one.